Hey guys, this is Peter, and today I got a really good question. It was from John, and well, he asked a question that made me enabled me to know what you guys are thinking. So good questions definitely help. So thank you. And of course, I hate when people respond and they're like, T-Mobile sucks. And it's like, okay, that's not data. You got to give me some data to work with. And here we go. So John asked me, help me understand. External antenna, this router set at 1420. And should I see over 500 megabits like you do? Well, right now he was only getting like 150. So what he's asking me is, if I do these few things, am I going to get the scores you're getting? And the answer is, well, maybe, but maybe not. And I guess the best analogy I can come up with is it's kind of like a golf swing. I could do the perfect pitch golf swing ever, a really nice golf swing, and it won't go as far as Tiger Woods because he practices all the time. He does special weightlifting stuff just for that. Well, he's really damn good at it, and uh, I, I just don't care. Anyway, any, th so I just wanted to say it's kind of like a lot of things coming together. There's no magic bullet, like, I'm going to type in 1420, and everything is going to work. It, everything has to come together in order to work. So here's the recipe to get the best 5G home internet scores that you can get. And, uh, well, just for all the different things that I've learned, the first thing you want to know is, what bands can you get? And I'm going to show you about that. So T-Mobile has a list of bands. They went to the FCC and bought some different frequencies and they call them bands. And uh, well, what you want is, I'll put a link up to this site right here. This page will show you what bands T-Mobile has. Different bands have different characteristics. For example, band 71. N71 is 5G. It's 5G XR, which means extended range. These are the ones that they place along freeways to cover as much area as possible. Keep you on, uh, keep you on the network, keep you connected, and put up the least amount of towers. But in a populated area, they may want to put up some of these other bands. And, well, N41 is one that is 2.5 gigahertz. What I like is it is a mid-band. It's going to travel quite far into our neighborhoods and uh, give you some good speed. Now, what T-Mobile's doing is they're aggregating. They're giving you two bands. And I'm going to show you how to see which bands you get. But what you'd like is one of these bands <laughs> with one of the faster 4G LTE bands down here. So my favorites are band 2 and band 66. As you can see, band 5, and there's even other ones in here, band 12. Yeah, band 12's here. Those are more of the extended range, slower things. So I think they're being kind of uh, uh, kind putting band five down here. I'd stick it up there, but I guess you got to draw the line somewhere. I draw the line at a thousand. But anyway, there you go. Band five for home internet and exciting scores like I'm getting, it sucks. And band twelve, same deal. And band seventy one, yeah. These are these are if you live in the boonies, you're happy to get these because they travel very far. We've used the analogy of hearing someone's stereo in traffic before. And yeah, if you, you think they're listening to just bass, my parents go, how do these young kids listen to bass all the time? It sounds like crap. It's like, well, you're not in their car. If you were in their car, you'd re realize they're listening to the entire song. All that's escaping the car is the lower frequencies. They penetrate things well and they travel very far. The higher frequencies, they don't. So this is what I get. I get band N41. So it's the, I guess it's ultra capacity, but it's the lowest ultra capacity. And I think that's what most people are going to get for home internet if they get a UC or ultra capacity band. Otherwise, you're going to be in this N71 band. Okay, this is how you see what you get. If you go to browser and you open it up and type... 192.168.12.1, you'll get this screen if you have T-Mobile Home Internet. And when you open up these connection pieces right here, signal one, signal two, so you have primary signal. This is your, I believe this is your 4G LTE signal, and this is your 5G signal. We'll check that in a second. But this is your reference signal ref, uh, received power. And you want the best number you can, 80 or above. <laughs> well, and by above because it's negative. So that would be really, really, you want to keep this number as, as I guess that's confusing, as low as possible. So 100 was okay, but you want 80 or below. So 90 would be worse, but 
If I could get 70 there, that'd be amazing. But anyway, that's why I'm getting three bars. Three bars, that's terrible. But I'm getting 10 here. You want 10 or below. And below, I mean, I know it's a negative number, but that's the way we think of it. Strip off the negatives. You want 80 or below. You want 10 or below. I'm getting pretty good. I'm over here. Again, 80 or below, I'm close. 10 or below, I'm close. That's why I'm getting four bars here. Now, what bands do those represent? Click over here on status. We're going to open up our primary band. B66. Oh, I was getting B2 before. And N41. So it switched me on bands a little bit. But B66 is also an excellent one. Check it out. Here's our 4G bands. B66 is anywhere from 1700 megahertz to 2100 megahertz. And band 2 is right in the middle. 1900 megahertz. So band 66 is either going to give me slightly less or slightly more. Again, I'm paired with N41, so that's the best of both worlds. Reasonable signal off of the best two bands. Now, if someone lived in downtown San Francisco and had a pole right across the street and they were able to pick up an N258 or an N260, that would be phenomenal. And they'd be like, oh, I get even better scores than you. It's like, yeah, but... <laughs> I don't have to worry about in the middle of night someone irradiating my brain by downloading some huge amount of something. Anyway, uh, th these are the bands that excite me because it travels the most. It helps T-Mobile cover the largest area. It's the one you're most likely going to get in the suburbs where I am. And um, if you live downtown, you have a shot at some of these. But I don't live downtown. This is the best I could hope for. And guess what? These scores are pretty phenomenal. I'm going to do a speed test for you. Oh, check this out. Now that I have my router the way that I want, uh, and I'll go into that. Look at this. 47 days I've been up without a reboot. And we're about to see a speed test on a machine that's been up for 47 days without having to reboot. A lot of people say, I have to reboot, otherwise it slows down. Well, let's see what happens here. <laughs> no, it's all or nothing. Either I'm going to hit stop and have to re-record. Or... All right, it says T-Mobile here, and I'm going to click it. I should get a low ping. Come on, 15. Boop, 18. That's a little high. Boop, a -choo, boop, boop. I'm hoping for over 700. Come on. Yeah, they got there. All right, 740 would be even better. I was doing, I think I was doing better with the, the B2. Uh, B2 over this B66. But, you know, 140 up is where I was at. And that's not too slouchy. It is 1043 in the evening. And it's been this consistent. So I'm not even surprised by these scores. 18 is a little high. That's <laughs> three milliseconds more than I was expecting. But again, just excellent performance. Excellent situation. So uh, let's go back to... Let me just jump back here and say the next thing you'd look at. Once you understand which bands you're getting and the signal strength and, well, the power or the, the quality, you also want excellent quality signal. That was the other number. We're getting good signal power and we're getting good quality and we're getting good scores. But uh, what else could you possibly do? Get a faster access point. T-Mobile is a wonderful service and I can't believe I'm getting such speeds for $50 a month. Thank you so much. However, the gateway that you've given me kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> it sucks because it's, well, it's a terrible receptor of 5G signal, and I had to tear it apart and add some antennas to it. So that was that. The other thing is it's not a very good access point, meaning it's not good for Wi-Fi. It covers the house, but, you know, we have a lot of devices in the house. And so once the kids start lighting it up, that thing gets really warm. So I've always used an external router. And, well, I've turned off a lot of the other stuff on there just to keep it cool. Not, probably not necessary, but I've made that part of the recipe. Just go ahead and turn off this, that, uh, this 5G stuff. Go to here, network. And I turned off my 2.4 gigahertz. You go in here and type in your stuff. And I turned this off so it's not broadcasting anymore. And this one shouldn't be, it's not broadcasting anymore. I just turn that stuff off. And that, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to make sure it's totally quiet. Well, if you're not using it, it's not going to be making much noise. Just turn it off to give your other router the, uh, well, the best experience it can have. 
And now I, got, I found a really good router and I put a link to that and I'll put up, I have a whole video on that. Very fast router. It gave me faster scores than the T-Mobile router, but it also gave me a little issue in that it was, its reliability wasn't hundred percent. It was like, it was working really good and I was happy. And then it would like, dip and or I'd come home from uh, work or, or from being out and my family would be like arms crossed like where were you the internet was funky and, and I'm like oh let me fix it and they're like it fixed itself okay so it would have these hiccups where it would fix itself and yeah we couldn't have that you could be in the middle of a show and all of a sudden you're not watching your show anymore so what we wanted to do was fix that. And I found a way to fix that and it was changing the packet size. You know, all these cellular providers, whether it be T-Mobile or Verizon, they have different packet sizes, which means it's the size of data, the size of data that they're sending every request. And if you have, uh, if you shape them properly and put them out on the network, it's gonna behave properly my packets were slightly too big so basically i was taking a packet and a half and shoving it in there and trying to send it and t-mobile was well having issues with that i changed my packet size and everything worked better so uh people might say is that the limit is that the most you can get and well if i had slightly better scores with slightly better quality uh and i already have the best bands i can really hope for I might be able to tweak it and get 800 megabits per second. Now, if someone lived in downtown and was able to pull one of those, what were those? Let's, let's put names to them. N260, N261. I think N260 is the absolute fastest. 39 gigahertz. Wow, I would not want that outside my window. So if someone goes, I have an amazing score from N260, I'd be like, Ugh, I'm not going to hang out at your house without a tinfoil hat. <laughs> those are the ones that people are kind of uh, more afraid of. Those are the, the the 5G millimeter band kind of things that people are a little concerned about the health risks. I like getting N41 because that's no worse than 5G. It's in the sub 6 gigahertz category. The fact that T-Mobile is able to get such amazing speeds using sub 6 gigahertz, meaning the 4 gigahertz spectrum, is just brilliant. I didn't have... When I first read about it, I thought, that'll be good if it works. But guess what? It's working. It's kicking butt. So I totally love that. I think it is the optimum solution. And congratulations to T-Mobile for having the right strategy. I can't believe their stock's down because uh, I'm going to buy even more because I think this is an absolute buy. They're absolutely going to dominate. Hey, take a look at the back of that can. There's an RJ11 connector. And I asked him if I called him and got him on the phone. And I said, can you tell me if that's for the Volte or the uh, voice over LTE? And they said, it's not there yet. And I asked them, you know, is it going to be? And they said, well, there's no official plans. But however, imagine if they get that working because they were thinking about it. That means they would have landlines back in everyone's houses on the routers. So you have your phone back, which would be great for faxes and that kind of stuff. And for emergencies and just for convenience sometimes. And for some of us that uh, are a little signal challenged and have an outside antenna like I do, that would be really nice to be able to bring in a clear phone signal into the house. There you go. I think that's kind of cool. I think T-Mobile made the right decision. Verizon spent $54 billion with our FCC buying all of these high band frequencies and they bid top dollar for all of them. These ones are only going to work for a couple of blocks before they dissipate. I'm not even within a couple blocks of my tower getting the N41. That's why I'm getting, well, N41. I would have to live downtown or just happen to be right next to a pole. And I'm kind of glad that I'm not because I have some concerns about what that could do to my bees. You know, all sorts of things. We don't really know what all that's going to do or the repercussions of it. Uh, I have a whole video on that. But, uh, you know, I'm not concerned getting N41 and I'm not concerned by broadcasting out on 4G LTE bands uh, to get my upstream. That's why you see such a disparate uh, number between your, your down speed and your up speed. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I was getting 88 and six. I was getting 88 megabits down from Comcast and paying 79 bucks a month. And I was getting six megabit up. And guess what? When we ran Zoom, uh, it Comcast would say, your internet's not fast enough. And it's like, 
oh, okay, so you want me to buy more internet. Well, it wasn't because my down wasn't enough. It was because my up wasn't enough. But uh, guess what? Screw them. <laughs> it's over. I'm not going back to them forever. I'm getting scores that I couldn't possibly believe or even dream of. They're absolutely amazing, as you saw. So there you go. That's how you can find the best scores you're going to get. And uh, hey, thanks for the questions. They always help out. They help me know what you're thinking and uh, help me answer it. You know. Oh, other people have told me, important note, they've said that, hey, 14, uh, 1400 or 1420 wasn't my number. And they're like, and they're like, I tried a little bit more and I tried a little bit less. And I saw people doing that online. They're saying, hunt it down, go buy tens, 14, 1410 and then 1400. One person wrote to me and said 1400, boom, it locked, unlocked and did everything the way that I said it would. So maybe that's what you got to do. Take a look, give it a shot and get your best scores and enjoy the heck out of this. I never thought that I would go from 88 to 720. I mean, it's crazy. So, uh, oh, and pay less with, um, without a data cap. No data cap. Comcast was warning me that I was hitting it every month. Check this out just for fun. Boom. Overview. What is it? I saw it on here somewhere. Aha. This is how much data I've sent. 1.76 terabytes. That is insane. I wonder how often this refreshes. It's probably going to refresh on the 28th. I'm going to clear two terabytes. That's just crazy. Better speeds, way more bandwidth. I now watch 4G stuff and can fall asleep and I wake up and I don't have to scold myself. It's just great. There you go. I've been really happy with T-Mobile and uh, I think you will be too if it works for you. If it doesn't, you know, hey, you got to go for Verizon, which could be optimum for you. It just depends on where you are. I have another video that shows how you can find out by looking up at the polls and finding out which different equipments in your area. I'll put a link to that one because that one's kind of neat. You can really dial in for any part of the country and I could tell you which streets your towers are on and what bands are they're putting out and if you have the possibility of picking them up and what your likely to your experience is likely going to be anyway guys thanks so much i babble on forever sitting here in my garage <laughs> but uh thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one hey give this thumbs up if you made it all the way through and uh we'll see you in the next one thanks